Hello everybody, it's Rhonda here from Nelson Soapery. Today we are going to be doing a video all about my candles. I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to get them beautiful and smooth because I do get lots of questions about, you know, people not being able to get those beautiful smooth tops. And can I tell you everybody, even if you're, you know, you pour it and you think, well, I'm just going to put the heat gun over the top to fix it. Sometimes if you pour it hot at the start, you're just never going to fix that issue. So today I'm going to take you around a little bit to see what I'm doing with my candles because um, it's one of those products for me that I always sell out of candles. Doesn't matter how many I put on there, they just sell out. So and a whole part of getting a good candle and making money out of selling a candle, honestly, is it needs to look beautiful. If your packaging doesn't look good, uh, you're just not going to sell it, no matter how good the candle is. And um, please don't be going and buying those cheaper scents because when you buy a scent that is super cheap, there's usually a reason for it. It usually doesn't perform very well. So today, like I said, I'm going to take you through a bit of my line of my candles and I'm going to show you the wax I use we'll talk about the temperatures and I'm also going to show you exactly how I pour it and the right temperature so we're going to be using coconut soy wax so let's go and I'll show you the first bit of the coconut soy wax so inside my studio it is crazy busy with boxes everywhere at the moment so hopefully we can film this okay so this is the one i use it's from pure candle supplies i don't get paid by them either to tell any of this this is just the one i used to i like i used to actually use 464 but i just kept having a lot of issues with it so then i decided to support an aussie business and of course i'm in australia so i decided to use pure candle supplies and this is a coconut coconut soy like I said I just find it really smooth and um, really easy to use so it comes like this of doesn't come with that um, uh, jug of course I just sit it inside and I've almost used the box but this is how it comes in the plastic bag uh, in the box and then they're kind of flakes so this is what the flakes look like they feel a little bit softer than 464 they definitely don't feel um, you know 464 to me feels kind of like cardboardy it's really um, you know straight and it, it doesn't feel flexible or soft whereas um, the coconut soy definitely feels a little softer now I also do use another product called a UV stabilizer and I actually get that from pure candle supplies as well and it looks like a little powder so I will go over to the other side and I'll get it so that I can actually show you and honestly it's pretty cheap and it really lasts for such a long time because you only need like 0.1 of a percent um, in it and what it actually does is it just tries it's not going to fix everything but it's going to slow down the process of you know when you get vanilla and that vanilla ends up um, you know doing this ring around the outside of like a brownie ring and it's just the vanilla it's natural you're not going to get away from that but um, the UV stabilizer definitely slows it down and helps with that so let's go over to that side and I'll show you um, that bit next so this is the stabilizer I was talking about. So you can see it lo literally looks like milk powder. Um, and basically what it is, is like I said, it's just a little stabilizer. And all I do is put a little bit on the end of a kebab stick and I just stir that in when everything's hot. So basically you want the wax to be, you know, um, hot. Then you're going to pour this in, of course, then wait to the right temperatures and pour the fragrance. But I will go through that step by step to show you um, what I actually do and to the side here I do have quite a few candles so I'm going to show you and we're going to talk about um, how you get the neat tops and how you don't because I have fails just like everyone else so let's go over to that bit next so here is my candle so this one we haven't undone yet so I'm going to show you that but before we start that I'm going to show you the bad candle so I've actually purposely done this with a little bit um, of wax left so that I could show you but I have fails like everyone else because you know sometimes you're in a hurry and you just want to get the wax poured but please make sure you know you're really waiting to that perfect temperature so this is what it looks like so can you see how terrible that top is even on the side can you see it looks all wrinkly and just not good at all now basically I can put the heat gun over this but honestly it's not going to make it look that great I mean it's still just going to look a bit messy 
so that's the thing everyone if you pour it at a too hot a temperature it's going to do this every time and I know you might think well it's only one degree or two degrees um, you know does it really matter well even that one or two degrees really can make it look messy so for instance with the coconut soy that I use so you can see this is my main big candle these are 400 gram jars and I do get these from pure candle supplies and these little tins come from Aussie candle supplies and I buy these in bulk because they're quite cheap uh, if you buy them in bulk so now with the big one here like I said we're using coconut soy so let's undo this and I'll show you and I'll talk about the temperature but we're also going to pour one today and I'll show you obviously those little bits have lifted there which is normal and then we'll just go over the top but can you see how pretty smooth that is I mean obviously we're just going to go over the top a little bit more but you can see it's really smooth and I've got some other ones to the side as well um, and you can see they're all pretty smooth that's a blooming rose and then I do have my orange patchouli so you can see that's pretty smooth just go over the edge because you know it's gone in a little dip there but usually I just heat gun over the top and they'll be fine there'll be no issues at all with those ones there now the thing is with these you do need to pour this and we're going to be talking today um, and I will put it in the description because somebody did ask the other day if I can put Fahrenheit and um also uh, degrees and celsius because we work in celsius in australia so i will do that just look in the description box everybody so now with the one that i'm using here um, basically you're going to sort of mix everything in around your 50 degrees and then um, we're going to be pouring this at 43 to 45 degrees now i've found that 43 is the sweet spot but can I tell you, you will notice that the wax starts look really cloudy and, um, you know, it's not like you would expect where, you know, when you use 464, you're going to be pouring it at a much hotter temperature. But this wax is a little different and that's why I love this wax because it's a really low temperature that we're pouring in. And um, honestly pretty much 95% of the time they're perfect I mean of course environment weather all those things can play a little bit um you know a little bit into the candles and I don't use 10% I use 9% fragrance load because you don't need the 10% I've definitely found that coconut soy has a better um, hot throw and cold throw uh, but that's just my opinion um, of, of course you can use soy and soy is very good I used it for a long time and the only reason actually I changed is I couldn't get the soy at the time so I thought look let's just go to the coconut soy and we'll give it a go I was a bit scared to use it but now I love it and I definitely would not be going back so anyway like I said so that's the candles for today now let's go over to the machine because as most of you know I actually do use a crock pot or a slow cooker as we call it here in Australia um, to melt down all of my waxes it does take a long time but I just can't afford one of those beautiful white melters that I would love I've seen them at luxury candle supplies and I would just love one but honestly I just can't afford that so I just have to wait even longer oh and I've got to tell you everything I'm going to show you something in a minute everyone um, and you're going to laugh like seriously laugh because my husband was laughing over this so let's go over to the other side so here is my little bench over here this is where I'm just doing a bit of testing and now can you see those little silver clips I bought them from Aussie Candle Supplies but you know when you've got a small business things just cost so much money and every dollar counts so I actually never bought them I used to use pegs I used to use paddle pop sticks I mean you name it anything to tie the uh, wicks around and I finally lashed out look they're only $11 but you know that $11 I just thought oh, I can buy something else so I mean my husband was laughing he said what a cheapskate you should have just bought them but I just didn't want to but finally I bought some and can I tell you game changer everyone they are amazing I love them and I mean look how perfect these wicks are I mean look at this I mean obviously they've got to be trimmed but look how centered and perfect they were and you're just never going to get that unless you use some sort of um, a wick clip and I've managed to do all of these my little tower of uh, 
small tin candles getting ready because uh, a few people that buy from me wholesale have said oh please make more we just want more because um, they keep selling out so I thought oh I better get on to that so anyway these are the wick um, ones if you want them like I said um, oh and I've got to show you too so you know we'll grab one of these so basically can you see the little lines on the edge that means they will fit this big 400 gram one they will also fit uh, this one here which is you know like your little tins 100 gram tins they also fit the medium ones so they fit most of them it's only if you're going to do like a 500 gram or more candle uh that i would say you need a bigger one and they do sell a bigger one i did buy just one um and i'll show you so this is the one bigger one so on that 400 gram one you can see it's it will go up one more size but anyway that's a little bit about the clips now let's go and look where we popped the wax so this is my little slow cooker and you can see the wax I've just popped it in and then I've just turned the dial onto one which is low and I know this looks very messy and not so beautiful does it here but um, you know it's a wax machine it's never going to look absolutely gorgeous um, I like to keep it real as you all know and um, you know there's no good showing a beautiful slick gorgeous one when it doesn't really look like that because wax goes everywhere so I turn it on low this is going to take a couple hours to melt down so in the morning I always say you know look go on to um, everything in the morning and just turn all your machines on and then in the afternoon you'll have time to do it so usually I turn this on then I'll come and do packing or I will get containers ready or I'll wrap soap whatever else I have to do or get orders out the door so anyway like I said today that's basically what I'm doing is just letting this melt down and then I will actually show you me making a candle and then we'll I'll also show you um, me photographing it and what I actually do to uh, get it all gorgeous so for now we're going to let that melt down and I'm going to bring you back this afternoon when we're ready so here we are everybody I have my wax sitting in here I have already put in the fragrance oil so I do have 1010 uh, grams of coconut soy wax in here which I've just taken out of the uh, crock pot or like we call it the slow cooker here um, that I showed you earlier because it obviously melted down and it is now in the afternoon so here it is in here like I said I have added in the fragrance oil so now we just want this to get down to about 43 degrees and then we can actually pour it inside uh, the vessels so here we go it is nice and smooth as you can see in here I know it doesn't look too beautiful but let's be honest we're going to keep this real today because it's messy business making candles so here is the tray look how gross and messy it is but luckily for me um, this particular um what is it scale is really really good because we can just take off this piece here and then i can wash that myself and you can see like how messy it is wax everywhere but that's okay i'll clean this up later on and sometimes what i do is put a big tray on top but i kind of forgot so anyway like i said it really doesn't matter but we're going to clean this up so like i said we're going to just check and to check it i use one of these this is an infrared uh thermometer which is really really good i actually got this from a um a place called i dream cakes you can get it from cakers paradise in australia and if you're in the u.s or any other country you can get this from many many uh places just go to your local cake shop so this was from the cake shop about 35 australian dollars which is much much less in other countries because in australia our dollar uh isn't very good at the moment but anyway like i said we're going to just let this get to the right temperature which is a waiting game I know and then we're going to go over and we are going to um, look at our vessels so in here I know it's a bit messy here but you won't mind I'm just thought I would show you so this is what it looks like so you can see here these are my candles ready to go and um, they're looking all gorgeous so I'm going to be making a watermelon um, candy kind of inspired candle for this one here I'm going to do a bit of testing I might actually also I've got some older jars that are black but the same size that I don't sell anymore but I thought I might use those just to do a bit of a test we'll do a test run on this particular new scent before it goes out 
so anyway I hope you guys are ready to wait to see the next section because then we're going to pour it all up and um, we'll see how it goes so here we are this is about my 12th batch of candles today so inside the jug here you can see that everything's melted and we're going to be using this infrared so now if you can see on that it says 47.2 uh, so no matter where you move it depending on where you move it but basically we want it in the center it's saying 47.3 so that means it's still too hot we want it to be about 43 degrees and as I said this is Celsius but please look down the bottom I'm going to put all of the information that you're actually going to need for Celsius and Fahrenheit for a cocoa soy and of course this one is from pure candle supplies but do remember that you may get ones that differ a little bit so um, like I said for now what we're going to do is just let this get to the right temperature then I will get on to the next thing I have so many labels I'll show you the labels um, and then let's have a look at the ones I've actually finished so here are my labels they are like a clear type label as well sometimes I don't do clear ones but uh, most of these um, are actually like a clear vinyl so that's what I'm using at the moment so this one's like Barry's daughter and it looks really light but once it goes on the white candle it looks beautiful but remember if you're using a black candle you really can't use these because you wouldn't see anything um, and then I'll show you a few so that's Barry's daughter that's the French pear although it's upside down and this is like my little French inspired uh, floral and teacup um, one so I've got to get going with those this is my true fruity one lots of people have been asking me to bring uh, more fruity ones um, although I do generally sell floral um, and then my beautiful ylang ylang you know the uh, lavender everybody loves that one super popular oh and one that is coming out this is my new one it's called cherry jane and um, it's all basically about like a really kind of sorbet ice cream slash with some cherries and just some fruity zing uh, in that one so that is a beautiful one and I'm going to bring that one back into uh, some moisturizing creams and so on as well so basically I'm going to run these scents across so a lot of these scents will go into bath bombs soaps and so on not all of them but basically um, that's uh, where I'm going with all of that as well and for anyone that wants to know my little plate that I take my photos on I actually bought it from a lady this is very very clever and I did say to my last video but their company is called Kish so uh, K-I-S-H and they make some absolutely beautiful bowls and trinket like little containers that are just so pretty and they're all handmade in lots and lots of colors so it's good to have something like that because it basically gives consistency to your photos because you're using the same thing and my company's pink so that is bringing a pink into it even if I'm doing you know like a lavender that's purple it's still bringing the pink back to uh, make my company really consistent and you'll be able to see I have decided on my logo so that is my logo I had it's still the same lettering and everything I've literally just changed the hearts for the flower because the other way I had it it was actually too tall and it was really hard to fit in lots of the labels so that's why I had to change my logo just a tiny bit but the Nelson and the Sopri is exactly the same it's literally just the change of the image so I am hoping that you love all of this well now let's just go and see if our candle's ready we will pour the last one and then that is it everyone so here it is everybody it is finished this one here is a lavender ylang and I thought I would actually show you this is literally set up for my photo shoot so it's literally just sitting on a tile that's all that is and the backboard here if I can get up nice and close this will show you that's basically what it is just white MDF and um, you can definitely make something like this yourself just cut it up and do something really simple uh, as well or you can buy bits of vinyl and stick them on MDF that's really uh, good as well so now it is night time and you just seen a little bug that's attracted to my light so I'm going to have to turn everything off and get these bugs out of here at the moment but anyway these are a few of these are little tester ones because of course I want to test these first we can't just sell them without testing that they work and that they are super cool 
so this is it for the night everybody and I hope that you really have enjoyed me just showing you a little bit about what we are uh, doing at the moment and I hope you love my new labels so anyway we are done aren't we for tonight and I hope you really like I said did enjoy it make sure you give me a massive thumbs up and if you want more help just go over and join me on Patreon of course uh, I will help you as well all the links are in the top right hand corner of the YouTube video anyway I'll see you next time my friends bye for now